Hello everyone. Welcome back. So in this week we have seen uh, the fundamentals of plasmonic resonances discussed about LSPR and uh, SPP and so on. So uh, I just wanted to record a short video on analytical cal calculations of uh, optical properties using me theory. The reason I want to do this is this. Nanophotonics is a frontier area and a uh, lot of things keep changing over time. And it's very useful if the students are able to understand the fundamentals in a very good way. But for that, the learning barrier sometimes is very steep. And uh, so, uh, in order to address more complicated problems, they have to develop insight, which is only done by working through some relatively uh, simple analytical techniques. Okay? One such technique that I'm very fond of is me theory. So, it lets you calculate the scattering cross-section of a nanoparticle, be it a metal or a dielectric. So in the in this week I have shown these graphs wherein we are talking about the scattering cross section and I said okay there is an electric dipole and then there is a higher order modes and so on. I even showed you this you know plots wherein you know the cross section is given as a function of diameter and then you have these various uh, field profiles and so on. So these are all calculated using an analytical tool and it's very useful if you are a researcher working in the area of uh, nanophotonics, so a PhD student. It definitely is useful to spend maybe a week in trying to understand some of these things because it will help you in the longer run. All right. If you are somebody who is just trying to uh, get a understanding of the subject and at a, a high level understanding, then I would suggest that you skip this particular video. But if you are somebody working in this uh, research area, then you should try to work it out yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the code okay, that I have used to calculate. So this is basically a Python notebook, IPython notebook, which you can use, uh, uh, which you can run using a software known as Anaconda. So using that, you, I, I've actually put this on GitHub. So if you go to go online and look for uh, a repository called as NQP Public. So it's hosted under my name. So search for Nareshi Mani. If you search for my name on GitHub, and then you'll find a folder, which is essentially this. So and if you go in there, you'll find the notebooks that are available. So, for example, here there is me theory notebooks and in that let me first look at, uh, let's say, me a silver. Okay. So, this is the notebook that will load and essentially I have tried to explain the basic uh, concepts in this. Okay. The theory is involved. So, I have taken this from this book, Absorption and Scattering of Light by Small Particles by Craig Boharan and Donald Huffman. So, this is a standard reference book uh, everyone in the world uses and then there is also some MATLAB Im implementation on available online. So what I've done is I've taken that and then I've tried to write a Python code. So basically this is a summary of it. So essentially when you try to calculate the scattering efficiency, you should go and read this book in the fourth chapter that will have more details. But in a sense you have the various input parameters like the radius of the sphere and then the wavelength at which you want to calculate the cross section based on that and also the refractive index of the medium and so on, right? Medium and the surrounding. If you have those parameters, you will be able to calculate the basic parameters. And then using that and certain functions which are essentially you know based on you can calculate these a and b coefficients which are known as uh, me coefficients okay a coefficients represent the electric uh, moments or electric uh, yeah electric moments so be it electric dipole electric quadrupole octopole and so on and the b coefficients represent the magnetic uh, dipole quadrupole octopole and so on so there are some expressions which are simple i mean these are not very complicated you can implement them at first, you know, sight, it might look like these are very, you know, <laughs> tedious. But uh, yeah, you sh you'll be able to implement if you spend a couple of days on this, you'll actually work it out. And um, so once you have these coefficients, you can easily sum up, you know, the scattering cross section, extinction cross section, and also the absorption, um, yeah, absorption cross section, you'll be able to calculate. All right. So the summary of the entire thing is given in this slide. And uh, if you want more details, of course, you have to read the textbook. All right. And and yeah, this J, N essentially are the Bessel functions, spherical Bessel functions. And so I have taken, you know, a little bit of, I've provided a brief, sum, brief summary of how to calculate them as well. So J, N and H, N are the spherical Bessel functions, you know. And then you can actually, you have, there are certain things called as recurrence relations. So first, you know, the first Bessel function of the zeroth order. And then you can calculate using that to higher orders and so on. So there is a relation that you can use. So all of this is implemented. Just this is the background that, you know, if you are interested, you can just understand that. All right. And... So finally, here is the code. 
so some routine uh, libraries are imported into the python notebook and then of course the you know the metal function this in this case i am actually calculating the scattering cross section for a metal so you see that uh, the, the there's a lambda for various you know, these are taken from this uh, reference this is a standard johnson and christie is a standard reference for plasmonics so you have the various lambda and then you have the refractive indices and the n and k values essentially okay so based on that you can actually compute so this is how the real part of refractive index looks like as a function of wavelength so we expect that like, this is what we have seen already so metal so above a certain frequency which is a plasma frequency it is metallic so it's negative and up in at about 800 nanometers it's roughly 30 plus minus 30 or minus 32 or so so negative uh, real part imaginary part i have not shown you but you can actually compute i mean already done this here so you can actually you know plot it and then uh, calculate and then check it out yourself so once we have the, the the basic properties and the the wavelengths and so on you will be able to just interpolate the various lambdas and then calculate so this is where the me coefficient this particular function you know there is some annotation you can look at it to understand what it is so the me coefficient is calculated here various uh, bessel functions are first calculated and then the consideration shifts are applied and then finally you get the coefficients so a and b coefficients are returned by this function so once you know that you can easily compute the scattering cross sections all right so this the size parameters and all that is explained already what it is so once you have this you plot plot the data it's some basically lot of text essentially to try to make it look nice and this is what you finally end up with so if you look at the met, uh, cross section uh, scattering cross section you see that you now this is actually normalized to the geometric cross section so that's why the number is you know uh, up to 10 or so and then you know you have extinction which is basically a sum of absorption and the scattering cross section so this is what it is and you can easily change the diameter for example here let me say i want to now calculate it for uh, a diameter of 100 uh, this is a local one so i have opened this notebook and uh, for example now let me go and compute for diameter of 100 nanometers so my uh, refractive index yeah this is the radius of the particle so radius i'll make it 50 so once i do that then i can just you know if i shift enter it will run so i mean some of these things you might have to know so it might take a little bit of time to familiarize with python but it's a pretty nice tool so then these things are calculated now we can plot it so this was for 50 nanometers now you see 100 nanometer you see the red shift in the resonance similarly if i go back and change it to 125 nanometers or something you know it will 100 nano uh, 75 nanometers if i make it it will even more red shift so in this just one single file everything is present so it will help you learn okay you see that you know you see whatever we showed in the slides this is what you have we cleaned up a little bit and put it on the slides so you see that uh, the absorption is not that significant the most of the loss is coming from the scattering all right so this is what it is so uh, i've hosted this so please go to github search for nqp uh, sorry narish himani nqp public this is a repository where i'll try to add as much as i can you know in the next week we are going to talk about uh, transform matrices so t matrix code that also i will try to put into this so i uh, hope you know you can use some of these things to uh, uh, learn by yourself so this is not something that is going to be uh, i mean the details cannot be taught in a course it has something that you have to do it by yourself but i have given you a working code so uh, with that i think you will be able to figure out all right so uh, that's it i just in the next uh, okay uh, i'm all, i have also added one more notebook for uh, dielectric nanoparticles i didn't talk about dielectric nanoparticles this week so maybe in the next week in the, i'll take a 5 10 minutes and then i'll talk about the dielectric nanoparticle as well but even further the code is given so in this case this is for silicon and the data is taken from palic so i just put the data here and then you see the same code essentially it's just that the refractive index changes here n sphere will be different in previous case n sphere was Uh, yeah i mean we essentially took the data and then created a function interpolation function here and then used that to generate the refractive indices so you have this and then that's it you calculate the same same data essentially same code will calculate in this case you will see a little bit more interesting uh, features in the scattering and uh, extinction coefficients oh, sorry uh, cross sections so we'll talk a little bit briefly in the next week in the first part you know 5 10 minutes i'll spend on this and then i'll talk about uh, uh, electromagnetic wave propagation in the periodic structures all right so thank you so much uh, we'll see you next week